Distances in Dimension 3 Last time we found a way of measuring distances in two-dimensional space using the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's talk about three-dimensional worlds and how they behave. If you were playing a three-dimensional video game, you might have a spawn point where your journey starts. Perhaps you always appear standing on the ground, a vast, flat surface that seems to go on forever. And perhaps you always start your journey facing the exact same way. We can use this information to build a mathematical description of the universe around you. Let's call your location the origin. As you stand at this spawn point, you can raise your right arm and point directly to your right. Let's call this direction the X direction. You can also gaze straight ahead of you instead. Let's call that direction the Y direction. And if you crane your neck and look directly upwards into the sky, let's call that direction the Z direction. With this understood, we can now specify any point in this universe by naming three numbers. These numbers are like a set of instructions for getting from the spawn point to the point in question. The first number says how far you should go in the X direction, the second number says how far you should go in the Y direction, and the third number says how far you should go in the Z direction. If you need to move left instead of right, then the first number will be negative. If you need to move backwards instead of forwards, then the second number will be negative. And if you need to move down instead of up, then the third number will be negative. So suppose we have a point in this world, call it A, B, C. To get to this point, you start at the origin, move A units to the right, B units forward, and C units upwards. Let's assume these numbers are all positive to keep things simple for the moment. How can we find the distance from the origin to this point? Well, when we think about this point, we can imagine some kind of rectangular box with one corner at the point in question and the opposite corner at the spawn point. This box has width A, length B, and height C. To find the distance from the origin to the point, we can imagine a rope pulled taut across the diagonal of the box from one corner to the opposite. We want to find the length of this rope. We can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to do this, as it turns out. But how? The Pythagorean theorem is about triangles, not boxes. Pause the video and see if you can come up with any ideas. Well, here's an idea. There are triangles hidden in this picture. If we imagine that the sun is shining down on the box from straight overhead, then the rope casts a shadow on the bottom of the box. How long is this shadow? The shadow is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, with side lengths a and b. So that hypotenuse must have length the square root of a squared plus b squared. So we found the length of the shadow, but how does that help us find the length of the rope? Well, there's another right triangle hidden in this picture, and this one is standing up straight instead of lying down flat. One side is the shadow, call its length s. Another is a vertical edge of the box, with length c. The angle between these two edges is a right angle, and the hypotenuse is our original rope. So this tells us that the length of our rope is the square root of s squared plus c squared. Well, we know that s is the square root of a squared plus b squared, so when we substitute that in, we get that the length is the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem in dimension 3, and it allows us to calculate the distance between any two points in this universe. This works even if neither point is the origin. Suppose one point is called x1, y1, z1, and the other point is called x2, y2, z2. How far do we need to move in the x direction to get from the first point to the second point? Well, we need to go x2 minus x1 units. Note that we're moving right if this number is positive and left if it's negative. Similarly, we need to go y2 minus y1 units in the y direction and z2 minus z1 units in the z direction. Again, let's imagine that all these numbers are positive, though what we're about to do works even if they aren't. So carefully suspended between our two points, we have a box with one corner at one point and the opposite corner at the other point. The width of this box is x2 minus x1. The length of the box is y2 minus y1, and the height of the box is z2 minus z1. So the total length of this diagonal, the distance between the two points we picked, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. This is called the distance formula in dimension 3. 
we can use it to find the distance between any two points in our vast three-dimensional world, and it's all thanks to the Pythagorean theorem. Next time we'll take things up a notch and talk about four-dimensional worlds. In the meantime, you can ask yourself, what do you think it should mean for a world to be four-dimensional? How do you think a video game would work if it were set in a four-dimensional universe?